Welcome to the next project. In this episode, we're working on a 1990 Jackson Soloist. It is in for refret, which I've already got the frets pulled out. I've got the fingerboard cleaned up already. Pulled the electronics out of it because they're getting swapped out. Um, new pots, new jack, a lot of love and attention all the way around. Um, a number of interesting things that were uncovered while I was taking this guitar apart. And let's take a look at that as we start the next project. As I mentioned, this is a 1990 Jackson, not Jacksonville, soloist made in the USA in Ontario, California, I believe. Uh, I looked up the serial number on this guitar and it was from Ontario and I was like, Canada? No, that'd be California. I uh, did a lot of checking of the specs in this guitar as I was taking part, checked the, the string height all over. Got a couple bad tuners. Well, the tuners aren't bad, just the installation from the factory was bad. Whoa, what was that? What is that? That's crazy. Heated up, burnt a bunch of schmutz out from underneath the frets. This has got 30 years of barroom sweat and fuzz and beer and everything else on it. A lot of interesting things. As I was pulling the frets, I did a uh, crush, a little tear out, back down and super glue it in. And now I'm scraping that away, making a smooth. But as I was taking apart, I tried to measure everything I could as I went, took notes, then probably lost the notes as I was going. Trying to take my time learning from uh, what happened 30 some years ago in a smoky factory far, far away. I'm guessing they had a good time building guitars back in the day probably a really good time. Pulling out the active pickups right here. I'm like, what in the heck happened there? It's got two big chew marks. Looks like a saber tooth tiger got a hold of it. I was looking closer and I was like, what? There's two matching holes right at the back end of where the neck pocket would be. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, I realized they had all the electronics in this guitar, and then they drilled for the tremolo claw. What? Why? What? Yep, apparently that's what they did. Oh, which one of these things is not like the other? Oh, here we are. We're gonna do just a gentle cleanup of the neck not resurfacing it, not trying to re-radius, because this does have a compound or conical radius, whichever you prefer. Started sanding it, cleaning it up, and it's still got a bunch of goop on it, so I had to clean the neck again the second or third time. I uh, used a little naphtha, get a little uh, more, well, maybe another layer of goop off it, and just gave it a really fine cleaning uh, with sandpaper. And you can see there is finger wear in this ebony neck, which was really, really dry. Leading up to the kickoff of this project, I was visiting with the owner of this guitar who's been playing it since it was brand new in 1990. And uh, the owner is like, yeah, you know, I want to switch it over to stainless frets. And I was like, well, that's cool. I can do stainless frets. So we visited about it for a couple days. I did have a little trouble finding the exact fret wire I wanted. And by the time um, I was ready to start doing frets, he was like, why don't we stay with nickel fret wire? It's like, okay. So I found some Dunlop 6110. Uh, was it super duper ultra wide jumbo jet? fret wire for this thing and used a pair of Stumac, hmm, I think they call them fret tang cutters or something. It's their new heavy duty monster pair. Well, they've been out for two or three years. New to me. And I also used my Amazon case nibblers to uh, snip the tangs just to kind of compare the two. Well, either will work just fine. So now I'm pressing the frets in and I am, or I did, use super glue uh, 
in addition to just pressing the frets in. So we're pressing them in and I was able to press them in all the way up to roughly, I think maybe the 15th or 16th fret. And then the guitar body was hitting the arbor press. So I did use a, a custom tool made of uh, ebony, I believe, and a hammer and hammered the, uh, the remaining frets in up to the 24th fret. So they're all pressed in. Here I'm filing the edges back to about a 30 degree bubble. Some people like 35, usually I go about 20 if I am rounding, kind of hot dog ending the uh, frets. But we're trying to make this very similar to how it came out of the factory. So they're really just beveled and then I ease the edges as well, which comes up soon. Did some adjustment of the truss rod, verified the neck is nice straight level, taped it off. I guess I believe in safety. Better safe than sorry. Used my custom level leveling beam and that is actual snail speed. Yep, that's how fast I move. I'm slow. And it's amazing I can get a video done in 15 minutes. Now we're moving at actual speed. That's me in flash mode. Crowning. That's that's actual speed right there. I'm off to a snail's pace race. Uh, reintroducing the crown of the frets. And I'm using a Stumac Z file. Then I have one modified Z file now. Um, I cut the handle off of one as an experiment, which I I do use a bit later. There it is, and that is actual speed. That's how fast I crown frets. Now I followed all that crowning up with some sanding uh, just to get rid of the initial beam sanding marks. Now I'm gently, just barely rounding the fret ends. I did not round them to like a hot dog or hemispherical shape. Just took the edge off a little bit. And we're ready to start polishing using my famous Mother's Mag Polish and a Dremel style tool. A little wool pad and polishing them up to a mirror-like shine. Some people have told me I can't use a Dremel tool because it makes the frets hot. I don't know what they are doing when they polish frets, but if you're grinding on them with a Dremel tool to the point where they get hot, you're probably doing it wrong. Other than the uh, flat top frets that were in this guitar uh, after 30 years of playing, the biggest concern uh, with the owner was the Floyd Rose. The knife edges were blunt and kind of mushroomed, but also the pivot posts were pretty well trashed. There should be a nice V kind of valley to the shape of the pivot posts. Well, this valley had a river bed gouged in the bottom of it. So I, I did buy new posts, put new posts in uh, for the knife edges to pivot on. a mangled up block there next to a brand new block. And here is the height stagger of the individual bridges and the knife edge cleaned up all the bits and pieces and parts. And that thing has got 30 years of wear on it. I did attend to a number of things in this project that I was not asked to do. Um, polishing it up just a little bit, I was not asked to do that but I wanted to make it shine a little bit better when it was leaving my possession than when it came to me. 
And overall, for a 30-year-old guitar that has been played a lot, gigged to pieces, uh, it's in really good shape. The owner takes great care of his stuff. Even though it is worn and it was dirty, it's not all banged up. And even though I polished it, I've got fingerprints all over it already. Eh, I'm a hack. Time flies and we are starting the reassembly process. Putting new pickups in this, a neck pickup, which is a, what is that, a hot rail, Seymour Duncan, and a bridge pickup, which is a JB Humbucker, Seymour Duncan, and a dummy, a fake pickup, in the middle. The owner is like, I don't need a middle pickup, just a neck and a bridge. He supplied the pickups. I was like, hey, that's great. We're ready to go. And that's looking like it's ready for action. Moving to the other end of this rock and roll beast, we are putting in new tuners and still using some old parts. These are new Goto brand tuners and I'm using the factory Jackson threaded insert or bushing on the top because it has more threads, but the new Goto tuner bodies have a deeper well with more threads. So between the two, I have enough thread to reach all the way through this 5 8 inch thick headstock. Here we're putting the strings on it, just doing an initial setup using uh, just a spare set of strings. And this is to get the bridge down in the dirt and level with the body. Uh, doing a quick stretch, checking the neck, making sure it's straight, flat, looking good. Tune it up, check string height, keep going back and forth until it's where I wanted it. Doing a quick hot rod setup, uh, attaching an output jack to the bridge pickup. Here I'm doing intonation actually. And this is how I approach these Floyd Roses. I don't even detune. I just uh, put the whammy bar on, dive bomb it, loosen the saddle, push it to where I need it, tighten it up, release tension on the whammy bar, retune, and check my intonation. And this is a little bit back and forth. I do have one of those intonation tools for an actual Floyd Rose, and don't buy one. They're not worth it. Dive bombing it like this is a lot easier and faster in my opinion. Let's take a look at this K-ish three position switch I'm using. It has eight lugs with three pairs of jumpered terminals. The first would be neck, which will tie to common. The middle position would tie both bridge and neck together, and the bridge position would run bridge to common. There are other ways to wire it, but what I want is to find a kill switch feature in the middle. So I have to do a little modification, cutting away a couple jumpers. The way this switch wants to work is one and six are for the neck, three and eight for bridge, two and seven would be bland, but I'm using for kill. And what I'm gonna do is run two and seven to a ground to cut down on buzzing. Five will be my common to output jack. One will be to the neck pickup. Three will be to the bridge pickup. Six and eight will tie into a tone pot. So we can see as it toggles through the different switch positions, how things will tie in together. So from the factory, this had one master volume and two tones, a crazy 90s preamp, but we're going with a neck and a bridge volume and a single tone initially. After the owner played it a bit, we wanted to reverse the bridge and the neck um, volume pots just for ease of use for him, even though it seems a little backwards. We may end up going back to a single master volume and two tones again. We're just kind of playing around with some ideas, but so far he's loving it, but I'm getting ahead of myself. 
One last thing to do, take care of the guitar case blues. Latches and hinges, all better now. Thank you.